the wonderful world of Disney. And now your host, Asian Film Fanatic. Welcome back, friends. Thanks for staying with me. For those of you who are just tuning in, I just wrapped up a spoiler-free review and am now moving into the commentary portion. Here now is Disney's 36th animated feature, Mulan. Walt Disney Pictures We begin with the Hunts invading the Great Wall. The Emperor gets notified and he orders a conscription to build up his troops. One man may be the difference between victory and defeat. Enter our young heroine. We quickly establish she eats rice with chopsticks like any stereotypical Asian. And she's a cheater! Writing hidden notes for her upcoming matchmaking session. And by the looks of her bad chopsticks etiquette, she's an awkward character indeed. Little brother makes for a cute excuse to sell dolls and nothing more. And I'm no fan of those chicken gags. Fa Zhou is a no-nonsense father, praying his ancestors to help Mulan. But funny dog and noisy chicken spoil it, making a joke out of the scene. Going to the matchmaker is about upholding the family honor. Insert Happy Meal toy number two, Cricky. Grandma also deserves a brief mention, voiced by cartoon legend June Foray. If the forced jokes haven't hit that we're watching an American animated film, our first song should. You know that face stretch animation is looking a little flat, boys. You may want to reanimate that. Honor to Us All focuses on the traditional physical and mental feminine conventions of an attractive bride. Beautiful and, uh, cultured. Mulan gets pushed around through this prep machine occasionally displaying her brainy side, helping an old guy win a Chinese chess match. A girl's worth is only measured by her honorable matching, they sing. Of course, Mulan's test is a total catastrophe of gags with the matchmaker. And we abruptly switch from slapstick to the soulful song, Reflection. In this song, Mulan laments her shortcomings, and questions her identity as a lesbian. Ah, <laughs> that's a joke, folks. This song seems to be about falling short of perfection as a daughter and potential bride. Her father instead lifts Mulan as a beautiful flower who has yet to blossom. I like this scene. It works. Before long, Fa Zhou gets drafted to the army. Testing his form, Mulan sees Fa Zhou is in no shape for battle. After an unpersuasive outburst to dissuade her father, Mulan dramatically decides to take her father's place. I'm not too big on the synthesizer sounds here, but the sequence is good stuff. Now we go from serious back to silly, with the comical appearance of the ancestors and Mushu. It's quite uneven. His sidekick role is to be as annoying and out of place as possible. I mean, his accidental role is to retrieve Mulan and prevent her from dishonor. The fate of the Pa family rests in, in your claws. claws. While Mulan awkwardly practices posing as a man, Mushu appears to preach the gospel. The music jokes. <laughs> As he clumsily coaches her through camp, we get a plethora of jokes satirizing male conventions, locker room humor, and horseplay. 
we meet the so-called Gang of Three. Yao, Ling, and Qian Po. I don't know why they're there. More comic relief to play off of, I suppose. Li Sheng is promoted to captain by his father to train Mulan's scrappy unit. God, why did they have to make this so... cartoony? Soon after, Mulan presents herself as, uh, Ping, Fa Zhou's son. Fa Zhu? The Fa Zhu? I didn't know Fa Zhu had a son. Fa Zhu? Joe. Zhu? Joe. Zhu? Joe. He doesn't talk about me much. Shang punishes the whole unit for Ping's fight twice. instigation, drawing the ear of the soldiers. The next morning, she wakes up and... Bacon and eggs? In Juk? Chinese people don't do that. No time to talk. Now remember, it's your first day of training, so let's play nice with the other kids. Looks like you fellas made a cultural mistake. Our next song is I'll Make a Man Out of You. And what is that? It's like he's not even consciously deflecting. How'd that get past the sweat box? Catching fish, breaking things with your head, these training ideas seem like a hodgepodge of tasks made up by western cartoonists. Mulan uh, initially fails at just about everything, but once she uses her ingenuity to retrieve the arrow, everything comes together. After showing the Huns are still coming, there's an awkward skinny dipping scene. Could have been cut. Shang gets told the troops aren't ready, and Mushu uh, forges a deployment letter. Artificial gags are scattered everywhere, and they're off to war. In the song, A Girl Worth Fighting For, the gang of three humorously expose stereotypical male fantasies about women. Mulan, on the other hand, suggests a girl like herself, someone with a brain who speaks her mind. But like previous tone shiftings, the song comes to an abrupt end to a devastated village. I like the red color palette. Shang's father and his entire unit have been wiped out. Mushu accidentally sets off a cannon, giving away what their happened? position. Um, you just gave away our position. Now we're... Can we put a little more snap into that animation? Shang looks like he's been hit with a slow moving arrow. From the mountaintops, a sea of arrows rains down upon them. As the soldiers escape, flaming arrows descend. Save the cannons, cries Shane. They all grab what they can from the cart before it sets ablaze. Mulan cuts her horse free, escaping barely in the nick of time before... Kaboom! Oh sure, save the horse, Mushu snarks. All the remaining cannons are fired, save for one. Hold the last cannon! A wall of Huns emerge on the horizon. Prepare to fight! If we die, we die with honor, warns Shang. Shan Yu unsheathes his sword and charges his army forward. Yeah. Aim the cannon Aim the at Shan Yu, instructs Shang. Noticing the snowy summits above, Mulan quickly grabs the cannon and charges toward the horde. Ping! cries Shang. Taking aim at the mountain, Mulan scrambles to light her cannon. Losing her flint, Shan Yu gallops in, closer and closer and closer. In a flash of thought, Mulan grabs Mushu and sets the cannon ablaze. Down comes an avalanche. Shan Yu takes a swipe at Mulan before she escapes. 
She tries fleeing on her horse with shame, but the snow envelops them. Struggling to stay above, she manages to save Shane. Do you see them? Yes! Yao shoots a lifeline to them, but it's too short. Falling off the cliff, Mulan fires the arrow back into Yao's hands. The whole unit dives after the rope, struggling to hold on. But before last, Qian Po lifts them all to safety. Wounded, Mulan blacks out. When a doctor notifies Shang that Ping is in fact a, a girl, they leave her, sparing her life. In her dejected state, Mulan wonders out loud that maybe she didn't go for her father. Maybe I didn't go for my father. Maybe she did it to prove she can do things right. What I really wanted was to prove I could do things right. For her self-worth. So when I looked in the mirror, I'd see someone worthwhile. Mushu also admits his failure as a guardian who was never even sent the in the first place. Your ancestors never sent me, they don't even like me. He goes on saying at least she risked her life to help the people she loved, while he risked his life to help himself. I mean, you risked your life to help people you love. I risked your life to help myself. Now Mushu, hold on, that's not what she said. She said she did it for herself. I think we're getting mixed messages here. It's almost like this was written by 31 people. <laughs> Just when he thought they were dead, Shan Yu and the few Huns burst out of the snow. Brr, I feel cold just looking at those fellas. <laughs> Now you see how that henchman's just claw walking at the air. Isn't that something? The Huns approach the city. Seeing this, Mulan tries to warn Shang, but he brushes her off. You said you trust Ping. Why is Mulan any different? I like that line. But to no avail. Fireworks? We all love fireworks. Isn't that a splendid Chinese invention? Shan Yu and the Huns make their surprise and kidnap the Emperor. You know boys, I'm not feeling the weight on that statue. I think you should go back and reanimate. Mulan announces she has an idea, and for whatever reason, they follow. Hey guys, let's all dress up like concubines. The gang of three's like, okay. Mulan's like, but I'm not doing that white face thing again. Shang's like, no, I have to preserve my masculinity. And all the remaining soldiers were like, forget this, I ain't doing it. But it's a nice touch for them to be climbing up that pillar just like their training exercise. Boo. I think the Emperor saw him coming. Boo. Now why on earth don't those two have nipples? Shang has nipples. Let's get down to business. Now if we have any nipple phobes in our studio, I want them fired. They take care of the henchmen and uh, rescue the emperor. Instead of escaping herself, Mulan bravely cuts the line, shutting Shan Yu off from pursuing. Mulan then reveals to Shan Yu she was the soldier that spoiled his plans, saving Shang. Hey, I'm making this up as I go. I don't know, I'm making this up as I go. Do we really have to steal that line? As if those remakes weren't bad enough, we haven't even bought Lucasfilm yet. Mushu goes after some fireworks. Somehow, Shan Yu is able to slice through solid wood like, uh, butter. Mulan makes it to the roof and manages to outmaneuver Shan Yu with her fan, her wits, and abilities. Kaboom! 
We can go with that. Now that's just the stuff I'm looking for. Having saved China, Mulan is honored by the Emperor and the entire crowd. Make that music swell, Jerry. The Emperor bestows Mulan with a medallion and Shan Yu's sword. She's gonna stab him! Phew, that's a relief. Those hugs will play well with our Western audiences. The flower has blossomed. Mulan returns home to her father, who cares more about her than family honor. The greatest gift and honor is having you for a daughter. That's the spirit, fellas. Well done. Suggesting Shang as a love interest is more of an afterthought than anything else. But okay, it's fine. Mushu gets to be a guardian, and... Take it, Tricky! I could just fire whoever decided that was a good idea, right? The wonderful world of Disney will continue in a moment. From Disney's Mulan, secret hero Mulan, the army's calling to you. Cut your flowing hair and do what you must do. The beautiful hair's gone. She's ready for training. So much to learn you can do with Captain Shane will help you through. <laughs> yes! Courage shining through every move you do. Secret hero Mulan. Hero you can remove the hair of your secret hero Mulan doll again and again. The Captain Doll sold separately. <laughs> Nestle Quick brings you even more fun with Disney's new movie Mulan. Now in theaters. Because when you down that irresistible chocolatey taste of Nestle Quick, you can enter to win a cool Mushu plush toy. <laughs> What a fun way to relive the action and adventure of Disney's Mulan all over again! Chocolate milk? Think quick! We now return to the wonderful world of Disney. Uh-huh. Yeah, well... Those guys sounded worse than a bunch of stinking communists. Fire them. Fire them all. Hmm? Now what do you mean we're not doing traditional animation anymore? I made this company. It all started with a mouse. A hand-drawn mouse. You work for a cartoon mouse. Now don't you ever forget about that. Bob! Now what? Mickey Mouse from Oh, we're back. <laughs> well, that concludes the commentary portion of our animated feature. In the end, Mulan is a woman who defies conventions, but not how you think. She's not a princess, and that's okay. She saves the day herself rather than needing Prince Charming. Neither is she really a tomboy. While in disguise, Mulan never quite loses sight that she's a girl who's posing as a man. She still retains her sensitivity and femininity as a woman while playing that game. It's not like Mulan doesn't want to be a perfect bride, or that she rejects being a woman. She's just uncomfortable with those social extremes. As a bit of a gender bender, these stereotypes are played with and broken, though themes of masculinity and femininity are more subject to gag-making and jokes. Man, woman, you know what Mulan is? Mulan is a dork. She's just a bit clumsy. 
awkward both as a potential bride and soldier. Of course, as a warrior, that changes. But not through toughness and brawn, rather through bravery and wits. She didn't try to muzzle her way through things and isn't intent on discrediting or outdoing men. It's not her goal to overpower or dominate or be aggressive as male stereotypes dictate. At the end, she doesn't reject her femininity, but rather asserts herself as a capable woman. Mulan shows strength her own way in defeating the Huns. She still retains warmth and emotional sensitivity. Disney stretches these roles rather than redefining them. We value Mulan for her unique strengths and for the honor she's earned. It's a nice balance. I hope you enjoyed the review and commentary. While Mulan may not be the finest animated feature in our Disney animated renaissance lineup as it's called, it holds a very special place in our hearts. It'll work. Yes, I think it worked out just fine. I'm the Asian Film Fanatic, and remember kids, there's a great big beautiful tomorrow Shining at the end of every day There's a great big beautiful tomorrow Just a dream away Hero Mulan, there's a hero inside of you.